Hey, what's up? It's Madeline Paquette. I am a sommelier and co-founder of winefolly.com where we learn by drinking. If you love wine and want to learn more about it, definitely think about subscribing, winefolly.com slash subscribe. With the newsletter, you'll also receive a Wine 101 guide for free. Meanwhile, Italian wine! If there is a topic that is more confusing, disorienting, mysterious, bewildering, I honestly think Italian wine is one of those topics you can spend your entire life learning. I have several books on the topic. This one's just Italian grape varieties. I have five wines here. If you're just getting started, these are great wines to try. These are all Italian red wines that sort of represent the classic Italian style that we have grown to know and to love. They're all really affordable, ranging from about 10 bucks a bottle to about $25. So you don't have to spend a lot to get into Italian wine. If there is one grape variety you absolutely must know, it's Sangiovese. And our first wine is exactly that. It comes to us from Tuscany, from the region of Chianti, and specifically Chianti Classico. Okay, this wine looks to be about a medium red color. I can see through it. On the nose, raspberry sauce, tanned leather, fresh thyme, red currants, and smells like a wet terracotta pot. Let's give it a taste. Woo! A huge explosion of tart acidity enters my mouth, leads into, I can feel them, moderate tannins, so maybe medium plus tannins on the front of my palate, kind of sticking my teeth to uh, my lips a bit, leads into this nice, warm, tingling sensation of the alcohol, really juicy wine. This would pair amazingly with pepperoni pizza. O-M-G. For our second wine, if you live in Milan or Turin, you know it as your weekly daily drinker, Barbera. This wine is a medium purple color on the nose. Huge flavors of plums, black currants, black licorice, subtle notes of violet, and dried herbs. Let's give it a taste. Woo! Another explosive acidic wine right up front. Huge flavors more in the sweet fruit, fruit spectrum, tannin wise much, much, much lower than Sangiovese. While we're in Northern Italy, in Piemonte, and talking red wines, it would be foolish of me not to mention one of Italy's most collected grapes, and that is Nebbiolo. This is a grape variety that's been made famous from the regions of Barolo and Barbaresco, but there are many more regions within the Piemonte area that produce fantastic Nebbiolo-based wines. Check this article out for more information. This wine is definitely a pale garnet color. On the nose, smells like baked raspberries, anise, roses, and subtle notes of cream and wet terracotta pots. Let's give it a taste. This wine builds on my palate as I taste it. Starts subtly delivering in more flavors of fruit, these like rich, sweet raspberry notes, then leads into more body, more tannin, and then on the finish, I feel that nice taste of alcohol leading back into the flavors of raspberries with that little bit of tannin sticking my teeth to my lips. It is a ballerina with boxing gloves. I love it, it's fantastic. If you don't like tannin, you probably won't like Nebbiolo, but if you're like me and you like a little punching, you're gonna love this wine. Our next red wine is a bit of an enigma. It produces some of Italy's greatest, most famous expensive red wines, and also their greatest, cheapest values. And that is the IGT, AKA the Super Tuscan. See, Italy has a classification system where if you don't use grapes to make your wine that are indigenous to that region, then you get boop, 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 declassified to IGT status. There were a few producers doing that and blending in French grapes, such as Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, and making interesting tasting wines. 
That created the interest for IGT, but you can still find great values in this category, and that's exactly what this wine is. Color-wise, it looks to be a medium ruby, a almost deep ruby color. On the nose, roasted black cherries, baked plums, tanned leather, and terracotta pots, baby. Let's give it a taste. On the palate, the body feels a lot richer with flavors of that cherry le leading more into tart cherry to plum. Then I have this nice mouth filling palette, medium tannins, maybe even on the lighter side. And that alcohol level again brings forward, matches the acidity in my mouth. Overall, acid wise, it feels a little bit lower than the other wines we were tasting. And for $12 a bottle that I spent on this wine, Fantastic value. Our last wine of the tasting comes to us from Sicily. Sicily, despite the fact that nobody ever talks about it, actually produces some of the most wine in all of Italy. A lot of sommeliers are freaking out about Nerello Mascalese coming from the region of Etna Rosso on the foot of Mount Etna, a live volcano. Color looks to be a medium garnet on the nose. Wow, weird. Sweet, red, maraschino cherries, violets, peony stems, and then these really interesting minerally notes of like granite, crushed rocks, and chalk. Let's give it a taste. On the palate, this wine of the bunch of them has a really interesting taste profile. Instead of an explosion up front, it slowly builds over time onto my palate. I get those flavors of red cherries. They lead into this chalky tannin structure on the middle of my palate and then finish with this like granite, gravelly, sort of sweet cherry and alcohol thing all at the same time in my mouth. More on the sweeter fruit side, so I feel like American wine drinkers would be keen on this grape. Reminds me sort of Pinot Noir, but just with a little bit more tannin. Uh, very, very fun. Etna Rosso. Live Volcano Mountain Wine. Super awesome to taste in Sicily. Dig around there, you'll find some great values. Etna Rosso is already pretty popular, so this wine was 25. But I've gotta say, Italian wines, you're gonna find different styles from the top of the boot all the way down from the heel to the toe and beyond. So that's our tasting, folks. If you want to learn more about it, I highly recommend looking into a copy of Wine Folly Magnum Edition, The Master Guide. We have an entire section in this book on Italian wine. Anyway, until next time, I love you guys. What are you drinking? What should we be drinking next? And if I can get my hands on it, I will. <laughs>